In this video, we're going to work through the solution to problem sheet one, question three, part C. So again, this is very similar to questions A and B. So we're going to rush through this one a little bit quicker. So we need to find the magnitude of the force acting on the charge. So we know that F is equal to E times Q2. So F is equal to E. Remember, is this, this is the strength. Remember, we're just interested in the magnitudes. So you don't need to worry about any of the directions or negative signs for now. So this is 2 times 10 to the power of 6 multiplied by minus 4 microcoulombs. But because we're interested in the magnitude, we don't worry about the negative sign. So 4 times 10 to the minus 6. And you can put brackets in here for your working. You really should because it makes it that bit clearer about what's going on. So F is then equal to 8 newtons. And that's the answer for part 1. The magnitude of the force acting on the charge is 8 newtons. Next up, we're going to find the direction of the force. Well, we can see the direction of the electric field the charge is being subjected to, and it's moving to the left. We know that the charge is negative because it's got this minus sign here. And that's important because in the lecture notes we said that if the charge was negative, the force will be in the opposite direction to the external field. So here's my charge from the lecture notes, and we can see that the electric field E is going to be in the opposite direction to the force which is F and I know it does get a little bit confusing because you've got E's and F's and very similar sounding terms but they are very different and you need to remember what they are so remember E is going to be the electric field by a charge and this is a separate charge that's been introduced so we're, intru so we're interested in what the additional effect is so that's part C